The first half of this match was positively electric. We saw right from the get-go two amazing chances for both sides to go ahead early. Adrian Silva on one end, Alexis Sanchez on the other. Two saves by Rui Patricio and Claudio Bravo. And from the first 10-15 minutes of this, of this game, this was a wide-open affair. Uh, we easily could have saw three or four goals inside of the first half an hour. Once both teams started to settle into the match itself, I thought for the most part and for large uh, periods of this game, things on the pitch were relatively even. Uh, the second half was not as electric, but I actually did personally enjoy the second half more. For Portugal, I thought their best players today were Fonche and uh, uh, Cedric. You know, a lot of people thought maybe with Pepe's absence that that back line would be a little bit shaky heading into this. Um, but they held up pretty firm. Uh, I thought that Cedric in particular did an excellent job of frustrating Alexis Sanchez up front, really uh, limiting his the, the open space that he would find himself in. Uh, Alexis Sanchez didn't really get on the end of many of the assists that he normally would in a typical match uh, because of the fact that Cedric was always behind him, was always on his tail, was always there every time he would turn around, every glancing moment. And for Fanche, we saw that Fanche possibly saved Portugal from going behind. Uh, I believe it was an extra time when he made that diving uh, block that or Vidal had a very clear shot on goal for that. I think it was Vidal. It might have been Sanchez. I don't remember. It was a few hours ago. So I thought both guys really stepped up on the pitch. I thought that Pepe's uh, disappearance was not a um, sorely lacking at all today. We knew heading into this match that Portugal was going to be the more defensively disciplined team, and that is how they looked. That is how they lined up. That is how they constructed themselves. And for the most part, when the second half uh, bore on from the 60th minute onwards to the 90th, I thought Portugal was going to grab a, uh, a late winner because I was looking at them. You could tell through their passing. They were taking their time on the ball. They were very patient. And I think arguably for most of the second half, uh, particularly many of the through balls that Ronaldo got onto uh, but just couldn't directed on target, I thought that Portugal created the more opportunities to score on in the second half. Extra time was a completely different story. I think what happened in extra time was Chile showed they had much more energy. And I think the reason for that is because Chile is used to this kind of situation. They've been here before, both in the last two major international tournaments, both Copa Americas in 2015 and 2016. They had been in a position where games had went into extra time, had gone to penalty shootouts. They were very comfortable. They were very confident because this is a team that knows how to weather that storm. And yeah, Portugal had a couple of knockout phase um, extra time fixtures last year in the European Championships. But for them, for the most part, in the, in the extra 30 minutes of extra, of uh, once the, the, the match itself was over, once it went to extra time, they looked relatively out of sync. And we saw that Chile was on the forefront of creating multiple opportunities to take this game 1-0, 2-0. I thought they had two excellent opportunities in extra time, particularly in the last uh, few minutes of the second half of extra time with um, Vidal's strike that smacked the right-hand post and the rebound from Rodriguez that clipped the crossbar. Uh, that was an absolutely uh, nerve-wracking last 60 seconds of the match. Uh, my heart was racing when that was going on. And arguably Rodriguez, when he got the rebound that smacked the crossbar, he was in an offside position. But the referee didn't call it. And thank God uh, that he didn't score because that maybe would have been a controversial goal. 
or maybe they would have went to VAR to uh, to reevaluate it. But overall, look, if you look at how Chile played in extra time, you could tell that Portugal seemed relatively comfortable with taking this to penalties. Um, Chile was the one who took the initiative. Portugal was the more patient team in the second half of regular time, but in the second half of extra time, Chile was the one who really looked to seize the moment here and to grab uh, a winning goal. And they were unlucky not to do so. A lot of people will argue that uh, there should have been a penalty because I believe that uh, Vargas had his foot stepped on. If you look if you look over it again, in my personal opinion, I don't think it was a penalty because I think that he just got barely nicked and it was mostly a soft touch. But that's just my opinion. I don't think it was a penalty because I think it would have been very soft if that was given. Um, and I'm thankful that, that the refs did not call it that way and the VAR didn't reevaluate it as well. But penalties. Um, who, who taught Nani how to take a penalty kick? Because, okay, I understand your teammates missed the first two. All the nerves are on, on you. But, my God, he just took a one-two step touch and just gave it right to bravo it's as if he just gave it to him um you know this was one of the shortest penalty shootouts in history i was actually on reddit and someone was uh posted a whole thing of um shortest penalty shootouts in history this is tied this is tied for the second uh excuse me for the shortest penalty shootout ever the other one where only six kicks were taken, ended 3-0, was in the 1988 Asian Cup match between Iran and China. And this is the first time I've seen a 3-0 in a penalty shootout uh, since the highlights of the Asian Cup in 2011 between Japan and South Korea, and especially since the World Cup in 2006 between Ukraine and Switzerland. Winning a penalty shootout 3-0 uh, requires you to miss all three, and your opponent to make all of their first three, or vice versa. So, for Portugal's perspective, this is really disappointing. And a lot of people were giving Ronaldo heat for not taking a penalty because he was he was lined up to take the fifth penalty for Portugal, but we never got that far. Saying that, well, he did it because he wanted to take the glory in case he, he made Portugal's last kick. I don't think so. I think what happened was Portugal was simply not expecting uh, this penalty shootout to end so quickly, you know, and it sort of mirrors how their semifinal defeat against Spain in Euro 2012 unfolded on penalties when Ronaldo was scheduled to take the fifth one, but he didn't get the opportunity to because Spain had beaten Portugal uh, before he had even gotten the chance to do so. So here, Caresma, I thought Caresma's pe uh, penalty save, I thought that was actually a good kick. I think that was not really his fault. I think that was mostly just Claudio Bravo for Chile doing his thing, making an excellent save. And again, three major international competition matches three years in a row. He finds himself as the goalkeeper, uh, making crucial saves. Did it twice against Argentina in 2015 and 2016. Did it here against Portugal. So the first penalty that Portugal screwed up, I think it was just uh, Bravo himself making a great save. The, the, um, the next two they made were, were, were horrible, particularly Nani's. And uh, they have to be disappointed with this because you at least thought in a penalty shootout they would keep it competitive. But at the end of the day, if you look at see how Chile played this game, they deserve to go through. They deserve to go to the final because I just felt in the last 30 minutes, they looked like they wanted it more. They, they looked like they just they didn't want to go to penalties. You could tell they were trying to avoid it. Um, and Portugal just looked all out of gas, and Chile looked like they had more in the tank. So congratulations to Chile. Um, I'll see you guys in my next video, where I will give my reaction to Mexico versus Germany. Mexico? Yeah. And um, I'll see you guys then. Till then, peace.